Well, let's talk about everybody's favorite show, NXT 2.0. Show wasn't that bad this week. I thought it was good, with some exceptions. So it, it started with Braun Breaker coming down to the ring, and they had teased last week that Apollo Crews was going to confront Braun Breaker, but before anything can even happen, out comes Pretty Deadly, and they come out to make fun of Braun Breaker, and then out comes Wes Lee, and they explain to Pretty Deadly that, you know, whenever you come out and act like an idiot at the start of the show, someone else is going to come out and interrupt and want a championship match. And that's about to happen. And Pretty Deadly looks around and says, who's it going to be? And Wesley says, it's going to be us. And so they uh, set that up for the main event. Braun Breaker and Wes Lee, the NXT and the North American champion versus the tag team champions. That is the main event for the show. And then our truth comes out. and uh, And here we go. So it's uh, Grayson Waller versus Truth, and everything's going all right. And then Truth runs and uh, goes for a flip dive, and out goes his knee. And I'm pretty sure it was when he planted to do the flip dive because he barely made it over the top rope. And he fell on the ground. He grabbed his knee. They go to break. And then when they come back from the break, he's being escorted away with the help of some uh, officials. So all the best to Truth. I mean, Truth looks great, but he is, you know, I think he's 50. How old is Truth? He's darn close to it. In fact, he's going to be 51 in January. So he's 50 years old. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how regularly he's working, but man... You know, you can look great on the outside. Let me tell you something personally. You can look great on the outside and be a wreck on the inside. So uh, hopefully he... uh, Mentally and physically, right, Brian? He heals up quick because that sucked. Then we had an interview with the Schism. And and you groan, but you know what? Ava Rain was fine in this segment. Sure she was. I mean, for someone who's never... Everybody's fine. Literally, she debuted on this show last week, and she cut a totally fine promo. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather listen to her than this Joe Gacy rigmarole. But anyway, she uh, she's with the schism. When she showed up and she got hurt, there was only one person who called, and it was Joe Gacy. And I always love when they do stuff like this because, like, Joe Gacy's a, he's supposed to be a horrible person, and he's manipulating her and everything like that. But if you if you take what she says seriously... Like, what a bunch of jerks in NXT. She suffered a serious injury, and nobody, including nice old Vic Joseph, nobody contacted her, with the exception of this horrible person, Joe Gacy. So, you know, they always say, like, you know, the best heels are the ones that feel that they are wronged, okay? But the key is they feel like they are wronged, but they weren't actually wronged. That's what makes them a heel. She was wronged. Nobody called to see how she was doing? Golly, no wonder she joined Joe Gacy. Maybe she's a witch, though. We don't know that. That's the one thing we're going to have to unpack from the backstory out of this. You know, that is The Rock's daughter. Maybe she was stuck up. Maybe she treated people poorly. Maybe that story that she was spinning about how she was at the Performance Center before she got hurt, maybe there's a reason that people didn't call her back. And we had Kiana James versus Thea Hale. And you know, I'm really invested in this storyline. That, uh, that We've had no evidence the storyline is continuing, which is disturbing to me. But as I'm watching this match right here, I'm thinking, you know, Thea should beat Kiana. And this makes Kiana so mad that now she's really determined to get this land. But instead, they did something weird. <laughs> so, as we talked about, Bodie's gone. And so Duke Hudson's a flag bearer, okay? So, I swear to God, this is what they did for the finish. Kiana James hits her finisher on Thea, okay? Duke Hudson puts Thea's foot on the ropes. Andre Chase then starts yelling at Duke Hudson. That's not what we do here in Chase U. We don't cheat. We're we're on the up and up here. So you know what, Duke? Get out of here. Go to the back. And Duke's like he's seething, but he goes, all right, Mr. Chase. And so he starts going to the back, which leads to 
Kiana James hitting Thea Hale with her finish again and pinning her. <laughs> I'm like, what? Well. Wow. So I wanted to put that finisher over. <laughs> what a finish. It's a choice. It was a choice. So then uh, the Virgin, who actually I don't know if that's his gimmick now that uh, Triple H has taken over. But he's back there with his other buddy. Are you kidding me? He and just Fallon had Henley. those guys dancing around. <laughs> and uh, and Fallon Henley is given an envelope. Otis looking like that. He loves by, that type uh, of thing. He ain't Vince, but he, he ain't far away either. Keanu James' uh, assistant hands uh, Fallon Henley an envelope. And she asks everyone to read it. And what better time to cut away than when they start reading? It's a mystery what's in this envelope. I mean, they might have land, too, for all I know. I mean, we know she has a bar, so maybe Kiana James is trying to get that bar. Maybe she's just going to buy everything. It's like Monopoly for Kiana yeah. James. She's just going to buy everything. Oh, my God. And we have... Uh, she's the new Million Dollar Man. Braun Breaker's she's in the, the locker room, woman. and she Von Wagner belt. challenges him to a title match. We have Odyssey Jones returning. To face Big Body Javi. And it uh, wasn't much of a match. Odyssey Jones beat Big Body Javi. Who's still employed. Who's still there. Buddy Hayward gone. Big Body Javi. Well, I think we talked about this earlier. There was Big an Body issue with Bodie, which clearly Big Body Javi is not having that issue. He's they reminded in the you, gym. They reminded you on this show that Odyssey Jones made it to the finals of the breakout tournament and he lost to Carmelo. And no offense to Odyssey, but I was thinking as I'm watching Braun Breaker, sort of not Braun Breaker, but uh, uh, Von Wagner in the back cutting his promo. I'm not saying that Von Wagner's a great promo because he's not, but he is really comfortable and he is coming along as a character in the ring. He has gotten better. I like he's, this Von Wagner. That's the thing. And I'm thinking about like Carmelo and some of the characters that they have. Even if they're higher on the charisma scale than the talent scale inside the ring, like Grayson Waller, I mean, Odyssey Jones is in a good spot because he's big, but that's only going to get you so far. There are a lot of better guys out there who are big on the indies. Look at Jonah as an example. If they can get something out of Odyssey, cool, but I think he's going to have to pick up the pace now that he's back. So we had this Mandy Rose segment we talked about. She comes out. She celebrates. She talks about how great she is. They have a video about how great she is. And then uh, smoke rises from the mat. And it is Alba fire. Because where there's smoke, there's fire. But they actually didn't say that. Although now they think about it, why didn't they? So she appears out of nowhere. She's got her bat. She... Gives Gigi a gory bomb through a table. And then we're right back where we were. I mean, it's just, it's continuing on. Like, there was no match, no finish, nothing. We're just back to this feud that I already saw. Monday. And I could not possibly care less. Apollo Crews backstage. He wants to challenge Braun Breaker. And here comes Von Wagner again. Scripts. What a stalker this guy is. Ugh. He got a phone number, and he's leaving a bunch of messages. I think it's 1986. Right, buddy. We have, and he's uh, got spray paint. We have uh, Indy Hartwell and Zoe Stark. And like we talked about last week, Zoe Stark's going heel. I mean, she worked this match as a total heel against Indy Hartwell. She's aggressive. She's getting the heat. She keeps not breaking at five. And finally, she's out there on the outside. She's going to do something horrible to Indy Hartwell. And, uh, and Nikita Lyons convinces her, don't do it! Just get in the ring and win this match fair. And so Zoe's like, ah. She rolls into the ring and gets pinned by Indy Hartwell. And they have a, I believe they have their championship rematch next week. <sighs> yeah, Indy Hartwell is like... Somebody who's been on the double A minor league team forever. 
and she's backstage. And you know what? If I'm Zoe Stark, maybe I do want to punch her in the face for giving me lip backstage in that locker room, saying in one breath that you haven't been given title shots and in the same breath talking about how much you lose and how much you've lost and how you always get passed over. Come on, man. I'm actually on Zoe Stark's side and all of this stuff. Valentina Faraz is backstage with Sanga. And she says, Sanga, I just don't know what's happening, but are you still going to corner me tonight? And Sanga is about to answer when up walks Veer. And Sanga puts his head down and he says, I just can't do it tonight, Valentina. And she says, Sanga, I understand. She walks away. And then Veer explains, Sanga, you're too nice, and everybody's taking advantage of you. Did you ever get anything being nice? Sanga realizes I, he didn't. Mm -hmm. So we got Cora Jade versus Valentina Faraz, and there is no Sanga, and Cora Jade beats her, goes to hit her with a stick after the match, but outruns who, Mike? Wendy Chu to make the save. Who? Wendy, Wendy Chu. Then we got the main event, which is pretty deadly versus We're Braun Stratton. Breaker. She's recovering from uh, from uh, being out. Yes. Pretty deadly versus Braun Breaker and Wes Lee is the main event. And it's a good match. Pretty deadly is I love them. And Braun Breaker is awesome. And this comeback that he made, I mean, God, he just killed these dudes. And then they're running wild. And finally, the ref is distracted. And uh, Wesley's going up to the top. And they actually had a big faux pas. The cameraman goes to the uh, uh, curtain before he's supposed to. Or actually, probably the director's fault. He showed the shot of it. So he knew somebody's coming out. And it ends up being Carmelo. He throws Wesley off the top. Wesley gets pinned. And then... Uh, you know, Wesley's angry, so he goes after Carmelo. They fight to the back. And then Braun's getting his belt, and he's ready to leave. And he gets laid out by old Von Wagner. And then they go backstage, and there's Apollo. And he wants a shot. And then there's J.D. McDonough. And, of course, he also wants a shot. So it's very clear where this is all going. They're going to do a four-way for the NXT title. And I bet you dollars to donuts, J.D. McDonough, Pins one of these guys oh. to win the title from Braun Breaker so Braun doesn't get beaten, and then off he goes to the main roster. Well, and what else okay. is he going to do here? What is the date on deadline? Is it before or after Survivor Series? It is before, correct? The date on deadline? What does that yeah. mean? Well, because that's when that's going to be the next big oh, that show? live event, right? I, I don't yeah. know. I think it's in December or something like that. Well, okay, then that would be a perfect time then to do something like that and have Braun Breaker walk off of that and enter the Royal December Rumble. 10. There you go, perfect. Because, look, if it's if it's not The Rock, which it very well probably is not, so then who does that leave you with? It leaves you with Cody Rhodes, but it also leaves you with the possibility of having another title open at that time, too, depending on what they decide to do with Roman. So Braun Breaker coming up to the main roster to wreck shop, not the worst idea in the world. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid, and so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree, and uh, I just remember looking up, and all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up, and there were Ewoks in the tree. That is definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down, and all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. <laughs> this is the weird thing he said. Yeah, it is. well, it is weird. Lot weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah, that's weird. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.